I have some unfortunate bad news for all the gays watching this video right now, and that news is that unprotected anal sex is the number one most sexually risky way for somebody to get HIV. Somebody to get and spread HIV. And it doesn't just end there. Out of all the gay people, top, bottom, verse, all of them, guess which, which one, which group is the most at risk for contracting HIV during unprotected anal sex? Bottoms. Bottoming is a lot more risky than topping is. I think HIV is bottom phobic, if I do say so myself, but HIV doesn't discriminate and no matter what your sexual preference or position is, we are all at risk for HIV if we engage in unprotected anal sex. Let me just do a quick little review as to what HIV actually is. HIV is the human immunodeficiency virus. It's essentially a virus that like attacks your immune system so that like when you get other diseases like you won't be able to fight them like they decrease like your white blood cells that like fight infections and stuff hiv if left untreated can lead to aids which is basically hiv but like on steroids and you're pretty much just like not healthy at that point it is important to say that like hiv treatment has gotten way better since like the 80s back then like gay people would like literally die from aids and hiv there was like an aids epidemic right but like nowadays we actually have improved so much in terms of medication like we have this thing called art and people with hiv all they have to do is just like take a pill a day and they can live almost normal lives if their hiv virus is like undetected in their bloodstream but we still we still don't want that right we still don't want like an incurable disease in our systems like even if we have the medication for it like i i still don't want it hiv spreads through bodily fluids like blood semen and vaginal fluids it does not transfer through saliva i thought i had more to say about that but that's pretty much it and so fear no more because kevin is here to tell you how you can avoid hiv as a gay man just like me before i get started please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you're new here and please check out my full bottoming course and my premium douche kits at the links below all right so the number one way for a gay man to prevent hiv is by obviously using a condom during intercourse it's just the most simple and the most known way for somebody to be safe when they have anal sex or just sex in general whether you're a top a bottom or a verse we want to make sure that whoever's cock-a-doodle-doo is going in whoever's bow tie. We want to make sure that that cock-a-doodle-doo, that rooster, that vitamin D has rubber latex around it, okay? We want to block that jizz from entering because like I said earlier, HIV spreads through bodily fluids like semen. So unless you're in like a healthy, monogamous, exclusive relationship with one other person that you know doesn't have HIV, try to wear a condom. I say that because sometimes people actually ask me like, oh, if I'm a virgin and if the other guy's a virgin, do I need to worry about HIV? The answer is no. If the person isn't infected, you don't have to worry about contracting anything if they jizz in you. You do have to worry though in general because you don't really know the status of everyone's sexual health. Sometimes people lie, sometimes people don't know, and it's just good to be safe, so just try to wear that condom. The second thing that you can do to avoid HIV as a gay man is to get on PrEP. PrEP is a pill that you can take every single day that reduces your risk of getting HIV by 99%, and it looks like this. There are two brands that offer PrEP. Um, this one is Discovy. I used to use Truvada when I was like, 21, 20 years old, but I think Discovy is like the main brand now. I don't take this anymore because I have been dry for months, um, so this is probably expired, but you know what? I gotta show you anyway. I'm gonna keep it real. People don't like condoms, especially gay people. Now, I'm not trying to promote not wearing condoms, but that's just the reality of it. I bottomed, which means I had receptive anal sex twice a week for about three years consistently with this one other guy from 2019 to recently and I probably wore a condom like literally four times out of like the hundred and like 50 times that I banged him and I was only on prep like sometimes so that's really really bad like it was very anxiety inducing and like thankfully I don't have HIV today but like that's only because I got lucky that I was with somebody who like kind of 
was trustworthy even though he wasn't mine and even though he had a boyfriend in the beginning who was in an open relationship with him and even though he was banging other guys while he was seeing me. You know, we're not gonna talk about me clowning because that's not relevant right now. Actually, it is relevant, but like we're gonna move on because I don't wanna like, I don't wanna be a bad example, but like basically don't be me, be on prep consistently. If you are constantly having sex, if you don't like wearing a condom when you have sex and if you're not in a monogamous, exclusive, healthy relationship with one partner, okay? Who knows? his HIV status. You can get PrEP on mister.com, M-I-S-T-R.com, and they usually give you PrEP for free if you live in the U.S. or a U.S. territory. I used to get mine at Planned Parenthood, but you do have to pay a little bit, I think, depending on your insurance and like what your benefits are, what they do always before giving you PrEP, whether it be Mr. or Planned Parenthood or like your local doctor. You can get it at your doctor's office, wherever is like medical vibes. What they do is they test you for HIV. They either draw your blood or finger prick it. They just gotta make sure that you don't have HIV first. Because if you do have HIV, you gotta like, you know, there's other medication for that. But once they test you, then once they find out that you're negative, that's when they'll give you your medication. So like I said, this is a pill that you take once a day, and this reduces your risk of getting HIV by 99%. It's PrEP, pre-exposure prophylaxis. It's also important to note that like if you take PrEP every single day, the first seven days, you won't be fully protected in those first seven days. I think by seven days, you're like 92% protected. And then by like a month, you'll be like 99% protected. So keep that in mind. The third way that a gay man can avoid getting HIV is when you're blowing somebody, make sure that you have no open sores in your mouth. Remember when I said that HIV spreads through bodily fluids like blood, semen, and vaginal fluids? Saliva isn't one of them. So you may think like, oh, well, you know, if I blow someone and it's saliva, it's not like the semen's getting into my bloodstream. How am I gonna get it, right? Wrong. You can most definitely get HIV from oral if you have open sores in your mouth because those open sores will be exposing your blood. And so if somebody pre-nuts or nuts in your mouth, that semen will make contact with the open source and then that will lead directly to your bloodstream. And so when you're blowing somebody unprotected, just make sure that you don't have any open sores in your mouth. When we're talking about oral sex, you definitely are lower to no risk when it comes to contracting HIV, but it's still kind of there. So just beware. This isn't like super relevant, but like the first and only time I got chlamydia was actually through head. I was literally a virgin. Anyway, moving on. The fourth thing that a gay man can do to avoid HIV is to make sure that the bottom's butt feels decently good when you're having anal sex. The reason why bottoms are more likely to contract HIV than tops is actually because your anal lining down there, like the anal muscles in your butt, are very fragile and a lot of the times there's like a tear or two that like we don't really feel or we don't really see and those tears when the semen goes in those tears that's how it's exposed to your bloodstream so obviously a lot of the times we won't be able to tell if there's tears or not because sometimes you can't feel them and they're still there but if your bottom and you're having sex and your butt hurts down there or like your top and your bottom doesn't feel good that could be a sign that there's a tear if the bottom is bleeding that's also a really bad sign because that's how HIV will spread. So just be aware of how your butt is feeling and make sure that it feels good. There are a couple ways to make sure that your butt is healthy down there in the bottoms preparation process. One way is to make sure to not douche too much because douching too much can remove the healthy bacteria that lives in your butt and that could expose you to HIV more potentially but at the same time you can't really have painless sex without douching because douching helps you get rid of poop chunks that are in your butt and if your poop chunks are there and if you're constipated, you could cut yourself. That's how I got an anal fissure. So just douche like three to five times. Don't like go overboard. The number one way that I avoid feeling discomfort and pain during sex is actually by plugging myself up with a butt plug during foreplay. These guys help a lot with reducing pain during sex if you use it like 30 minutes to like an hour before. They help you loosen up. So definitely prepare really well and don't forget to use a lot of water-based lube, both when you're preparing and when you're actually having sex. Lube is the key for things to move around smoothly because when things are dry, things are likely to rip. We have made it to my last tip of the day on how to avoid HIV as a gay man. And this tip is a little bit different because this tip is only applicable if you think you got HIV after you got jizzed in. So everything I said before this tip were all like preventative, right? This one you do if it's too late. If you know that you just got bred by somebody that has 
HIV or you think that you just got bred by somebody who has HIV and that is to go on PEP. Now I don't have this pill but it's basically PrEP's older brother. PEP is post-exposure prophylaxis which means it's a pill that you take for up to 20 days after HIV exposure to prevent it from getting into your bloodstream. Now there's a little catch when it comes to PEP. It's only effective if you take it within 72 hours of HIV exposure, which means that from the moment you get bred by somebody with HIV, you have 72 hours from that moment to get on PEP. Otherwise, it will not work. The earlier, the more effective. So if you think someone just bred you and that person has HIV, get on PEP within like a day, two days, because there's still a way for you to not contract the virus. A few of my friends have taken this pill before and they said the side effects aren't amazing. So definitely only go on this if you like have enough reason to do so, but still, better safe than sorry. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't done so already, please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you're new here. It really does help out with the YouTube algorithm. And again, please check out my full bottoming course and my premium douche kits at the links below. I also have stretch kits at the links below and they're basically just like my butt plug sets in little kits and like it comes with lube and like an instruction manual and a letter by me. So Go check out my kits if you want to. It's not mandatory, I guess. But yeah, this is all very important stuff. So if you guys have any questions, please leave a comment and I will get to you. Please also let me know what you'd like to hear about next, what tips you would like, what kind of questions you have regarding bottoming and sex and anything gay related. And I will make a video on those topics. Thank you so much for watching my channel. I love you and I'll see you soon.